John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what was said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you shall see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever been in a space, like maybe like a concert or you're at the theater, and then all of a sudden there, there's this profound moment of silence, and you see that the entire, the entire audience is dead silence. And of course it's in that moment that you absolutely have to cough. Yes, the other day I was at the BPO, the Bethlehem Philharmonic Orchestra, and I saw that it's like whenever there was a silent moment, like somebody had to cough. Like it was just like this natural reaction. And I think for a lot of us, we're uncomfortable with living in that silence. We have so many things in our society that give us noise, whether that's the news media, whether that's technology, it's our cell phones, it's the constant beeping that's going off, the phone ringing off the wall. There's all these things we worry about in our work lives and with our family and that are going on in the world. And all of these things distract us from being able to hear that peace and to hear the voice of Christ. And of course, when we know like how Jesus speaks and how he speaks to us in prayer, he doesn't speak to us in text messages or in, in Facebook or in social media, but he speaks to us in the heart. And the only way that we can open our hearts to hear the voice of Christ is by exposing ourselves to silence. We see this going on in today's first reading from the book of Samuel, where he's, he's, in, he's sleeping in the temple of the Lord. So that would be like one of us sleeping before the tabernacle. And he hears the Lord call him in, in the night. He says, he says, you know, Samuel, Samuel. And of course, Samuel doesn't know the voice of the Lord, so he thinks it's his mentor, Eli. So he keeps running to Eli. And he does this three times. And then finally it clicks, oh, this is the Lord speaking to Samuel. And then, of course, when he says, uh, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, then he's able to open up and he's able to hear the voice of God. And we see that's a very special relationship that Samuel has with the Lord. But it's a reminder that each and every one of us is called to open up our hearts as well. Just as the Lord spoke to Samuel in prayer, so too we need to quiet our minds and quiet our hearts so that we can hear the voice of the Lord speak to us, to hear the promptings of the Holy Spirit come on our hearts. Because when we follow what the Lord has called us to, when we follow his ways, he can lead us to great things. And this brings us to today's gospel passage, which is, you know, the famous calling of the first apostles from the Gospel of John. But we see that John the Baptist, the first thing he says in this narrative is, Behold the Lamb of God. So what John is doing here is he's already calling Jesus out as the Messiah. He's saying that Jesus is the Lamb without blemish, that Jesus is going to be crucified for each and every one of us to die for our sins. But we see that John has opened up his heart to hear the voice of God in order to know that Christ is the, that this is the Messiah. But we also see that the first apostles are the ones who also opened up their hearts to follow Jesus. Because what they did is they see Jesus say, Behold the Lamb of God. Or they say, John say, Behold the Lamb of God. And they immediately start following Jesus. Because they know he's the Messiah. They know he's the Christ, Savior of the world. Because they've opened their heart to do that. But then this, the grace they don't keep to themselves, right? Um, Andrew goes out and calls his brother Simon, Simon and, and then calls him to follow Jesus. And he brings him to Jesus. And then look at what Jesus says. Jesus looked at Simon, Simon and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. So what we see here is that Andrew had his heart opened to receive the love of God. He had his heart opened to follow God. He brought his brother along. And then Jesus, and then so Simon, who is named Peter, opens his heart to follow Jesus. And then Jesus does this great thing with him, which he calls um, Cephas, which means, which is like, it's a translated word that means a big rock or boulder. So, which is kind of 
funny because, you know, it's actually the rock of Christ that the church is built on. But it's Simon Peter who becomes the first pope. He becomes the first of the apostles and really the, the first foundation of the church. But what we see here is something else going on here, too. And you, when you think about how, you know, Jesus meets Simon and he renames him Peter and gives us this nickname of rock. It's really interesting how close the relationship is when you think about it. When we give each other nicknames, that's because we have that close relationship with somebody. We might call a friend by a nickname or maybe our spouse we have little nicknames for that we wouldn't use in public, but yet it's our intimate name that we use with them. That's what the Lord is doing here. And in the Old Testament, it's very common for when a, a prophet or a leader is commissioned to a new role, they receive a new name. And this is why in some religious orders, even today, when they enter, they, they take a solemn profession of vows, they actually receive a new name for their religious order because they're starting a new way of life. But this is where the Lord, just as he has called Simon Peter, he calls each and every one of us by name. But we have to open our hearts to discern what the Lord is calling us to do. And this, of course, is what we often call a vocation, which comes from the Latin word vocare, which means to call. And this is how we need to open up our hearts to see where the Lord is calling us. And we talk about big vocations, such as priesthood, diaconate, religious life, consecrated virginity. But there's also the, and marriage, of course. But there's also those little ways that the Lord calls us as well. Maybe it's to reach out to a neighbor. Maybe it's to call an estranged friend of ours. Maybe it's to reconcile with our families. Maybe it's to ask somebody to forgiveness who needs it from us. And today as we have this, this snowstorm, maybe it's we need to help one of our neighbors who's trapped in by themselves. Maybe go shovel out their driveway. Maybe go bring them a meal. Check on them and make sure they're doing okay. There's all these little ways that the Lord can call us and can help us to bring about the kingdom of God here on earth. But we have to be open to receiving that call. Just like Samuel, who quieted his heart, who was able to hear the voice of the Lord, so too we need to quiet our minds and our hearts as well to open up our hearts to Jesus. And I can't think of any better way to do this but to come to adoration. When you sit there before the monstrance, you see our Lord in his sacramental presence right there before us. And that's where our focus becomes solely on him. And that's what always works for me to help me open up my heart to receive Jesus. But for many people, this can be by singing hymns, by reading sacred scripture, by coming to daily mass, by praying the rosary of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. All of these things help bring us closer to Christ. But it's not enough to say the words. We have to open up our hearts to hear that calling of the Lord and quiet our hearts and minds to hear his call. So today as we continue our Sunday celebration, let us be mindful of our call to silence. And may that not be a source of anxiety for us, but let us relish in that ability to quiet our hearts and minds, to open our hearts to the Lord, so we can hear where he is calling us and leading us to do his work. <laughs>